It turns out that filtration on a cold plunge is actually pretty straightforward. There's a number of different takes on how to do this online. In my opinion, there's really only two things to consider. First is the filter housing. I've tested and used different filter housings that have different size pipe connections, flow rates, filter sizes. And in my opinion, this filter housing from GE is the only one you should use. It comes with a mounting bracket that you'll use to attach to your build. It's got this battery powered filter change alert light. You won't actually end up using this. You can just discard it. It also comes with a wrench for both tightening the fittings and removing the filter housing. And then of course, the filter housing itself. It has three quarter inch female threaded connections on both the in and out ports. So it easily connects to the rest of your components. There's no additional adapters or anything needed. It's got the built-in bypass and shutoff valve for easy maintenance. And when you unscrew the canister, you'll see this rubber O-ring. And obviously the canister itself is clear. So you'll be able to see the filter as it collects debris and gets dirty. The bypass and shutoff valve is hands down the best feature on this filter housing. With it, you don't need to drain or shut off your cold plunge to swap your filter. And that alone to me makes it worth it. I also have this condensation sleeve designed specifically for this housing. If you wanna support the channel, you can find this along with other plans, products, and resources at DIYcoldplunge.com. So that covers the filter housing. Let's talk about what filters you should put in it. If you go with my recommendation here, you'll be using 10 inch by two and a half inch filters. And just a warning, they may look the same, but not not all filters are created equal. There's different styles and micron ratings that you need to look out for, and here's what I've learned. Skip anything that looks like a spool of yarn or ones that are carbon or polypropylene sediment filters. Just stick to pleated polyester filters. They're the ones that kind of look like paper and avoid the ones that have the plastic webbing around the outside. So that covers the filter type. The next specification to look for is the micron rating. And in short, the lower the micron rating, the more debris that it will filter and the faster that your filter will get clogged. In the early days, I started out using five micron filters, then I bumped up to 20, then 30, and eventually landed on 50 micron. 20 micron is what you'll see a lot of the bigger cold plunge brands recommend, but I personally don't see any difference between the 20 and the 50 micron in terms of water clarity in my cold plunge. And on top of that, the 50 micron lasts just a little bit longer. I have a link to the exact filters that I've been using for the past year in the description below. Here's what a filter change looks like using these components. Before you even get to your cold plunge, open up your filter and give it a good rinse. Then switch your valve on your filter housing to bypass. You'll unscrew the housing using the included wrench if needed. Then you'll dump out the dirty water and remove the old filter. Toss the new one in, then inspect the rubber O-ring to make sure it's not kinked or damaged. Then you'll screw the housing back on and switch the valve to filter. In general, you should be replacing your filters every four to six weeks. And FYI, I do get asked this question. If you read the label on your filter, they're typically rated for how much water will flow through them. And if you do some quick math and figure out how much your pump pumps per day, you would have to switch out these filters all the time. Your cold plunge is a closed loop system, meaning there's not new water being introduced. And that's why you can go with the four to six weeks instead of what's printed on the label. So use that as a guideline, but pay attention to your water flow. If you notice that it slowed down, it's probably time for change. You can also check on how dirty your filter looks inside the housing and when in doubt just swap it out. There will be small variances in height on some of these filters and because of that some of the filters might get squished or twisted inside the housing. That's totally fine and normal. It just requires a little bit more muscle to twist it back on. And remember that your plumbing system is designed to run as a whole. Each part will play off of each other to function properly and the GE filter housing provides the perfect balance of water flow to create the vacuum in your filtration and sanitation system. I've used filter housings that require bigger filters, higher flow rates, larger pipe sizes, and they throw everything out of whack, lose the vacuum at the Venturi, and need additional fittings and configurations to correct it. If that sounds overwhelming, check out my site. I've got plumbing plans that'll put you on the right track. I only sell what works, so read up on the customer reviews if you're on the fence. But what about pre-filters? I need to protect the pump. I've tested and used both pre-filters and hair traps, and frankly, I hate them. They clog, they're hard to take out and clean, they complicate your plumbing setup, and if you aren't religious about my monitoring it, it can damage your system and do more harm than good. I've got a separate video where I go deeper on this, but for the amount of debris that you actually bring into your cold plunge and that can make it through the strainer piece in your outlet, there is an extremely small chance that anything could make it through that will damage your pump or other components. I've been doing this a long time and I've had no issues not having a pre-filter. Remember that filtration is only half of the equation. You'll also need to implement a sanitation method to keep your water clean, clear, and safe. 
My last two videos covered ozone sanitation and how to use the Venturi injector. And my next segment will cover how to design a filtration and sanitation assembly like this one. I hope you learned something today. If you have questions, drop them in the comments. I've got links to all this stuff in the description below. And if you wanna support the channel, consider shopping at DIYcoldplunge.com or at the very least, hit the subscribe button below. I'm Joe with DIY Cold Plunge. We'll see you at the next video.